Today, we're going to be talking about the neighborhood rolling 40 cribs, the glove game. Even though the rolling 40s have been around for over four decades, this gang is one of the new members of the rolling oak car. But don't get it twisted. This group is one of the most active and notorious gangs to come out of Los Angeles, California. And they are known to go at with anybody, even members of their own umbrella. Yeah, we won't go over all that and much more as we explain who are the neighborhood rolling 40 cribs. Yeah, all right. Welcome to Cali's Most Dangerous. Let's get into it. In June of 2014, at about 7.25 p.m., Demetrius Bonnier, Reginald Pitts, and Chris Hooks were talking to each other on a street in the Venice Gangster Territory in Los Angeles, California. In the beginning, everything was putting out how things usually did. The men were joking with each other, drinking, and plotting the rest of the night out. But things quickly took a turn left when Bonnier looked to his right and saw Leroy Roberts, a known member of the Rolling 40 Crips, standing there with a pistol aimed towards him. Well, without words, Roberts immediately tried to fire the gun, but it jammed. In the midst of this, Bonnier, Pitts, and Hooks took off and ran in separate directions. Bonnier saw a car that looked like it was chasing him, so he hopped over a fence. So Robert continued towards the other two men. While attempting to unjam the gun, Roberts chased Pitts and Bonnier down the street. During the chase though, Pitts slipped and fell into the sidewalk. After the stumble, he tried to get back up and run, but it was too late. From less than three feet away from Pitts, Roberts got his gun unjammed and fired six shots into Pitts, taking his life in the process. After that, with no words, Robert runs away from the scene and disappears into the neighborhood. The prosecutor presented a hypothetical based on the facts of the case. He said the crimes were committed for the benefit of an association in the neighborhood rolling 40 cribs. He explained that the association part is that the shooter was inside a vehicle with other members of rolling 40s and they were driving through the rival territory where they knew it would be a good chance that they could find rival gang members. The prosecutor also said that assault and murder benefits the rolling 40s. This creates fear within the community and increases the respect for the gang. In the end, Roberts was sentenced to prison for 50 years to life, plus 10 years for the firearm enhancement. Man, bro, cutthroat. That's the first word that comes to mind when I'm thinking about this story. And these guys have numerous other stories that come with the gang's name. This brings us to the danger rating of the Rolling 40 Crips. The inner seas receives a danger rating of a nine and a half out of 10 based off of the gang's history of territory takeovers, gang wars, and multiple means of extortion. Yeah, these guys were brutal back in the days and to this day remain one of the most active and respected gangs in Los Angeles, California. But trust, there's a lot more stories that get way, way, way more deeper than this. And it definitely explains the notorious reputation. But y'all gotta stick around for them as we get into who are the neighborhood rolling 40 cribs. It's a deadly mix, gangs, guns, and drugs. So violent, it means a murder a night in Los Angeles. Gang members have outgrown the cheap pistols, once part of street crime. These days, they carry sawed-off shotguns and submachine guns. Los Angeles had more than 400 gang-related murders last year, both victims and killers often in their teens. It's a high-profile operation. Agents and vehicles flown in by military jet from Washington to Los Angeles, where most of the arrests were made. Reporters and photographers were invited along. The RFCs are gang located in South Los Angeles, California, from the community of Lamert Park to east of the 110 freeway, between north of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and south of Vernon Avenue. And most of their territory combined stretches from Vermont Avenue to the Merck Park between Crenshaw Boulevard to Figueroa Avenue. And they're mainly split between four main cliques. Going from west to east is the avenues. The western side is from Arlington to Normandy. Park side is from Normandy to Vermont. And the dark side is from Vermont Avenue to the 110 freeway. They also have a subset located in the southeast region of San Diego, California. When it comes to logos and attire, members of the Rolling 40s are known to wear baby blue and the Florida Marlins or the Milwaukee Brewers apparel to represent their gang. This is one of the reasons why the 40s are known as the glove gang. So when you see someone with this hat on in the area, no nigga, he's not a Brewers fan. He's in the field for real and he's looking for a score or a kill. I'm just trying to give you a heads up so you know the deal. Bars, nigga. 
Now seriously, when it comes to gang activities, these guys are definitely outside. According to the FBI and the LAPD reports, this is one of the most active gangs in Los Angeles, particularly the dark side rolling 40s click. Yeah, these niggas are known in the city. They have stories in the headlines that range from multiple gang injunctions, murders, robberies, and even gang territory takeovers. In fact, they're responsible for the four Trey Hoovers non-existence today. And this is why the dark side is the only neighborhood click or set with turf on Hoover Street. But trust, it's much more to this. Y'all gotta stick around for why the Hoovers and neighborhood rolling 40s hate each other as we get into rivalries later in the story. But for now, let's get into some history. History of the Neighborhood Rolling 40 Crips The Neighborhood Rolling 40 Crips started in the 1970s as four different fashions which included the Avenues, the Vernon Avenue Hustlers, and the King Boulevard Hustlers who were known for getting money and just having females. And these gangs held their own without having any Crip nor blood title to their name. But in the mid 1980s, a big meeting was set up to establish the Rolling 40 Crip Alliance amongst these groups. This alliance combined their territories and made them one of the biggest gangs in Los Angeles. Compared to the already established Rolling Old members like the Rolling 60s and the Harlem Rolling 30 Crips, the Rolling 40s are a new member of the umbrella. But this only made the gang more active. They made sure they went to war with anybody to establish themselves as a respected gang. But being this young of a gang also means there's going to be a lot of mistakes and lessons they have to learn from. A big one. If it's war and you got a target, make sure you get him. On the afternoon of March 25th, 2016, Robert Ellis went to his usual barbershop located at the Hut, which was a strip mall on the corner of South Vermont Avenue and 55th Street. The Hut is a known hangout for the Five Dudes Hoovers and the Five One Trouble Gangster Crips. Members in both gangs were customers at the barbershop. There have been numerous shootings over many years at or around a barbershop, so this was already a hot spot for shooter activities. Elvis didn't think anything of it though. He grew up in the area, he was not a member of any gang, nor was he wearing any colors or any attire that suggested he was a gang member. Well, when he walked in, Ellis' barber informed him that he had a few customers ahead of him, so Ellis went outside to wait for his haircut. Outside, there were about 12 people in the parking lot talking amongst each other and waiting in the car. The shop was busy because it was a holiday weekend, so it had a lot of traffic coming in and out of the lot. But at around 2.14 p.m., the barbershop customers in the parking lot scattered away from the scene as shots erupted towards the group from a nearby single shooter. Ellis, who had been shot in the chest, died within moments. During the investigation, seven expanded 45 caliber cases were found on the scene. Also, the following events were captured on surveillance cameras, which showed the shooter walking up in the alley towards the strip mall. The shooter, whose face was partially covered by a gray hoodie, ran up, crouched behind a car, then sprang up and fired shots from a semi-automatic weapon. The shooter then ran away. About a month later, on April 14, 2016, law enforcement held a press conference to notify the public of a reward offered for information regarding the shooting. The information disclosed to the media included a general description of the suspect, surveillance video of the shooting, and public stills photographs of the video, including one that zoomed into the shooter's face. The next day, Detective Eric Crossan of the Los Angeles Police Department received tips identifying five or six different people as a suspect. One of the tips led Detective Grothman to locate a Facebook page for someone with a profile name, Dallas Sign Fatal. The account included photographs of Tyrone Foster, a known neighborhood Rolling 40 Crip member. Crossman learned Foster's name by speaking with the gang officer, Robert Smith, who knew Foster. During the investigation, they found a Facebook friend of Foster's that included photographs of Foster displaying hand signs and wearing Nike basketball shoes that appeared to be the same shoes worn by the shooter. Also, Detective Crossman obtained search warrants for two residents associated with Foster several phone records and Facebook accounts. In one of the residences, officers found mail with Foster's name on it and a shoebox with gang graffiti on it. The records obtained from Facebook revealed a telephone number for a cell phone that had been used to upload photographs to that account. After obtaining the cell phone records and cell phone tower information associated with the number, officers obtained an arrest warrant for Foster and arrested him on May 5th of 2016. 
the police placed Foster in a cell with the undercover agent, who was wearing a hidden camera that recorded both video and audio. When Foster entered the cell, he asked the agent what he was in for, and the agent said he was in custody for a hot one, meaning a murder. Foster said, me too. Foster asked the agent about the status of his case and the nature of the evidence against him. The agent talked about a supposed offense and told Foster the police had camera footage of his whole body and face, but did not have footage of the shooting itself. Foster stated that in this case, the police cannot just go off of video footage because if they just go off of that part of me or anything, that could be anybody, he added. He also added that the police did not have my weapon, no clothing, or any witnesses. The agent then asked if the police have found anything during the search of Foster's residence. Foster said he took an old pair of shoes. And the agent asked, that's not the one you had, right? Foster responded, that's close to the color, but they're not the same. The agent asked Foster, what enemy was they blaming you for? Foster said, some hovers. The agent emphasized the importance of destroying any possible evidence, saying Foster should get someone to destroy that gun. But Foster commented that he was not concerned about any fingerprints on the gun because he commonly wore gloves. Lastly, the agent asked Foster what kind of gun he used and Foster said a chunky little 45. He also said the police had little to go on because he had not shouted his gang's name when he committed the shootings. After that conversation though, the pigs had everything they needed to pin Foster to the murder, and in the end, he was sentenced to 90 years to life. Sadly, Ellis lost his life been at the wrong place at the wrong time. Initially, Foster, a known NFC, was on a mission looking for their biggest enemies, the Hoovers. And rather nighttime or broad daylight, he was looking for a body. That touches back to this gang's notorious reputation, but it also brings us to the rivals of the neighborhood rolling 40 cribs. Rivals of the NFCs include the Ronald 20 Neighborhood Bloods, the Black Peace Stones, the Inglewood Family Gangster Bloods, the Centinella Park Family Bloods, the Fruit Town Brims, the Van Ness Gangster Brims, the Harvard Park Brims, the Five Dudes Broadway Gangster Crips, the Playboy Gangster Crips, the Schoolyard Crips, the Five One Gangster Crips, and all East Coast Crips as well. They also go out with neighborhood sets too. The Neighborhood Ronald 40 Crips fall under the neighborhood and the rolling on umbrella. But that means absolutely nothing if you're rolling 40. They down there EBK, or everybody kill it. They have an on and off beef with the Harlem Rolling 30 Crips which started in the 1990s. The source of this beef is from the last murder of a Rolling 30 Crip by a neighborhood Rolling 30 Crip member. This sparked a tit for tax series of retaliation shootings between the two gangs. A truce was made between the two gangs in around 2006 but to this day, some members of both gangs still have a lot of hate for each other, which makes their relationship very volatile at times. Also, the neighborhood rolling 40 Crips have a long standing on and off feud with the neighborhood rolling 60 Crips as well. The fourth generation 40s kicked off a war in the 60s after a 60 allegedly got beat up at a party and came back shooting. To this day, they have a very unpredictable relationship. It's like one month they cool, like, oh, miss my brother, this and that. Boom, boom, my 40 brother, my 60 brother. The next, man, they beefing at it again. Matter of fact, rest in peace to Lady 40 from neighborhood rolling 40s. She was killed by another female who was from neighborhood rolling 60s in May earlier this year. And this has made tensions high between the two gangs. But all these issues and beefs are nothing compared to their biggest rivals. Y'all go ahead and take a guess. The Hoovers, nigga. Beef with the Hoovers. Annie Estes and their daughter Marlisha Carter lived together in a home which is situated in the territory of the Hoover Gang, which is close to the neighborhood Rolling 40 Cribs Gang. Carter's boyfriend at the time, Michael Harrison, belonged to a subset of the Hoover Gang known as the A Trey Hoovers. Carter explained that the Hoover Gang and the Rolling 40s did not get along. They said or emailed nasty things to one another, and the members often fought and sometimes shot members of each other's gangs. In the morning of June 28, 2014, Estes was a front passenger in Harrison's white Tahoe truck with Carter in the back seat behind her. As they traveled to visit Estes' sister, Harrison parked the car in a liquor store parking lot and waited while Carter went inside to make a purchase. As she returned, Carter saw Carter Woman's Henderson's red Tahoe truck. She immediately recognized the truck and Henderson. As she had seen them both before and associated them with the Rolling 40s gang. As Harrison drove out of the parking lot, Carter saw Henderson driving up behind him through Harrison's rear window. When Harrison stopped at the red light, Henderson pulled alongside him, lowered his window, and asked Harrison where he was from. To which Harrison responded, A. Trey Hoover. 
Henderson responded, fuck Hoover. And as Harrison attempted to turn right, Henderson fired multiple gunshots into the driver's side of the white Tahoe. Harrison completed the turn and stopped mid block. He'd been struck by two bullets, one in the back and the other in the buttocks. One bullet struck Essence in the hip and another bullet bruised Carter's left thigh. The shooter left eight holes in the driver's side of Harrison's white Tahoe, five of them in the driver's door and the rest in the back seat. The left rear tire flagged by a gunshot and a bullet was later found on the ground behind a driver's seat. The next night, police stopped and arrested Henderson as he was driving his red Tahoe truck on 46th Street and Vermont Avenue in the Rona 40s gang territory. Officers found 40 caliber bullet casings in the Tahoe and later a semi-automatic handgun also found in a hidden compartment above the glove box. Along what looked like rock coke, several credit cards that appeared to be fraudulent and a 10 round magazine with 1140 caliber bullets. A DNA sample taken from a bag of narcotics was determined to belong to Henderson and his fingerprints was found on the gun. The gun was tested and determined to have fired one of the bullets found at the scene of the shooting. Ultimately, Henderson was sentenced to 180 years to life for the attempted murders. Thankfully, the group survived, but this touches on how badly the NFCs and the Hoovers hate each other. Anywhere, anytime, it's on side between them two. This beef goes all the way back to the 1970s, before the gang was officially under the neighborhood umbrella. Members of the Rolling 40s didn't like the way the Hoovers recruited other gangs and people into their set but they often chill with the other members of the Rolling 60s and other Rolling Old Cars as well. But instead of trying to recruit them, they just hung out with the group and grew closer to them. This set a course of the Rolling 40s officially adding neighborhood cars to their title. Well, the Hoovers obviously didn't take kindly to this, especially with them being right in the Fort Trey Hoovers territory and a bloody war between the two gangs started. In the end, the Fort Trey Hoovers are no longer active and their territory was taken over by the neighborhood Rolling 40 Crips. Yeah, this gang war has sadly taken lives on both sides, whether through means of prison or death. And to this day, all sections of the Hoover, especially the five dudes Hoovers, go at it hard with the neighborhood Rolling 40 Crips. And it honestly doesn't look like it will come to an end anytime soon, like anytime soon at all. The, the foot soldiers all the way up to the OGs have a deeply seated hate for one another. Speaking of OGs, this brings us to the prominent figures from the set. The NFCs have had a lot of prominent OGs from the set, but doing my research, I found a few members who are no longer with us. So rest in peace to Johnny Cox, also known as KD, who was shot and killed on January 11th in 2016 on Vernon Avenue near Western Avenue, a day before his 32nd birthday. Rest in peace to Gary D. Dorton, also known as Twin, who was shot and killed on July 1st, 2018 on the 4500 South Block of Venice Avenue and Joseph Gilbert, who also was known as 40 Joe, who was stabbed to death at a party in the jungles on November 25th, 2005. They also have a lot of known OGs who put the gang on the map as well. Some of them include S-Bone, Big Pookie, Stony Boy, Rick Rock, Don Juan, and Big Caveman. They also have some rappers who have been putting in work for the set as well. Some of them include number four. I couldn't find any like real music from them, but what I found, bro, it's cool. Like a lot of catchy flows, you know, hooks like that you rap to. Kind of reminds me of like a, like an older Tay K. Also, it's Blue Nose. If you ever want to see an example of how mixed the games are all here, this guy is a great example of it, man. Mexican dude, but real, real loked out, bro. Like tatted up, looking like a cholo, but nah, nigga, he a loke, bro. This nigga a loke, bro. And on top of that, though, man, this nigga got bars, bro. A lot of cool, catchy flows, too, but he can, like, really, really rap, bro. It seems like he can hang with the best of them. And lastly, it's Holy Rock. I just had my son, Low Agent, man, he heaven sent. My bad, so if I hit it, I just bless the bitch. Bars, nigga. Bars, nigga. <laughs> yeah, this nigga is hard, bro. I'm down there feeling like pulling up on our block and just letting off a topper. You feel me? While I'm listening to this nigga, bro. You feel me? I feel like nigga throwing on a ski mask and going to rob a banks listening to this nigga, man. <laughs> nah, seriously, bro. Y'all definitely gotta look at all these rappers, man. Check all these dudes out. To be honest, man, these dudes got a lot of rappers, bro. A lot of rappers. I ain't even gonna front, but just for the sake of the, the length of the video, I had to just include a few. And also, y'all let me know in the comments. I'm thinking about any OGs or anything like that, man. Let let their names be known, man. Let their names live on for that matter, too. 
current state of the neighborhood around 40 cribs. The suspected gang members are behind bars arrested in pre-dawn raids this morning. The lengthy investigation into drugs and weapons targeted a gang in South Los Angeles. Rolling 40's neighborhood crips are known for selling drugs and committing violent crimes in South Los Angeles. There are about 750 known members of that gang. Today, about 47 of them are behind bars. It was part of the LAPD's 18-month-long investigation into the Rolling 40 street gang a group that has been terrorizing the streets of South Los Angeles. Total of 74 gang members were charged in the indictment. Operation 40 Ounces to Freedom is what the LAPD called this latest sweep. We will use every single remedy, civil and criminal, at our disposal to get this job done. And we will be back. On October 21st, 2009, the LAPD and the FBI executed gang injunction on 74 members of the neighborhood around 40 Crips. They were charged with 23 federal indictments and 45 state warrants for their alleged role in a narcotics trafficking conspiracy that operated within a three square mile area of Los Angeles. The neighborhood around 40 Crips were charged with crimes that included conspiracy, possession with the intent to distribute, and firearm violations. Also, 45 additional members of the gang were named to state charges filed in Los Angeles Superior Court for their roles in the illegal drug distribution operation. Despite the 74 arrests on the NMCs that came with a possible 20-year conviction, the neighborhood of the 40 Crips are still one of the most active Crip gangs to come out of Los Angeles, California. Matter of fact, they are the top five most active gangs right now according to FBI reports. And they've grown to the point to where they have sets in several other states like North Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, and Baltimore. But, but y'all let me know in the comments if I'm missing your state, man. Rep for your state, rep for your state. Anyways, like I already mentioned, the neighborhood Rolling 40 Crips are a new gang compared to other Rolling O members. But this gang has made their mark on the streets of Los Angeles and are still one of the most respected gangs to come out of Los Angeles. That's it for the NSCs though. Y'all got any crazy stories about these guys? Any close calls? Y'all let me know in the comments, man. Did I get anything wrong? Did I miss anything? Y'all let me know in the comments about that as well. Let's have a conversation about it, man. Let's have a conversation. Anyways, if you're a new member, hit that subscribe button, man. Come on to the game, man. Welcome home. Uh, if you already part of the game, like and hit that bell. Y'all stay safe and dangerous out there.